That's actually that's actually an important point that we're gonna hit a, a little later in the episode. But yeah. But I forget uh, the word or is it the no. Spanish translation? The Spanish translation. So wow. that 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 that'll be fun. Um what's up, man? I don't have a bit. I'm just <laughs> I don't either. You want to jump right into it? Uh... Chema, hit the intro. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chema. I'm Eddie. Reviewing Inside Out 2, and this is the rollback. Make room. I need to call time uh, out. We need to do that intro one more time. I have a better. I have. I if we don't, if we're not missing a bit, I have at least a slight joke. All right. Okay. Chema, re-hit the intro. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chema. I'm like a mix of like anger and anxiety. Ah, I'm full on anxiety, and this is the rollback. Reviewing Inside Out 2, make room for new emotions. Teenager Riley's Mind Headquarters is undergoing a sudden demolition to make room for something entirely unexpected. New emotions, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. We've long been running a successful operation by all accounts, aren't sure how to feel when anxiety shows up, and it looks like she's not alone. So nine years after the original, we have the sequel to Inside Out, this time directed by Mr. Kelsey Mann. It's his first uh, uh, Pixar-directed uh, a movie. He's been working with Pixar for quite some time, and mm-hmm. he finally uh, uh, d- directs with this one. Uh, starring Amy Poehler, Maya Hawk, Kensington Talman, Lisa Lapira, Phyllis Smith, Louis Black, Tony Hale, Ayo Itabiri, Adele Exarchopoulos, Lillimar, Grace Lou, and other colorful characters. Literally colorful this time. Um, yeah. Uh, so we made no secret. We're both big fans of Pixar. Uh, you're a big fan of Pixar, I know. Uh, and I also. But it looks like, you know, we've had different stances on what they've been doing and how they've been changing, how they've been evolving. I personally really like the little... Uh, I'm going to call it what it is. It was a creative rut that they had where they just said, fuck it, we're restarting. And a little started from scratch was really good. Uh, Soul, I think, was one of the best picture movies ever made. Uh, Turning Red was absurdly original and super fun. Luca was a super cute return to form. And a light year fucking happened. So we're here... You know, yeah. Look, I didn't like like you, but I appreciated how Pixar tried to do something same, same but different with a completely different art style. I think it works better in something like Turning Red. But okay, they're trying. They're trying different things. I will never fault someone for trying something different. But okay, we're finished with the experimental phase. We're back to uh, feel good blockbusters, and what a way to do it! Inside Out, I think, is a movie that everyone kind of loved. I love that. It. It's one of my favorite Pixar films. And a movie that definitely deserved a sequel, definitely had a lot of room to have just more creativity. And uh, happy to report that, yes, this is as good as the first one, maybe even better. Um, so what did you think about Inside Out 2? Uh, I actually really, 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 really liked it. Yeah, like like I I have my own feelings about the voice casting controversy, and we'll talk about that whenever we get there. But like overall impressions of the movie, I really liked it. I thought it was a great, meaningful story, an important story, something that much like the first one should be watched. Um, I think maybe its importance is more than the animation uh, or the comedy is. And you you showed me this. You turned me on to this. Um, apparently psychologists were using inside out the film and the toys to help kids express their emotions. It was very useful for the field of child psychology. Yeah. And I love how, um, maybe Disney got wind of this and, or maybe it was Pixar or both. I don't care, but they decided to evolve. And instead of, you know, retreading old ground, which you're always scared of sequels going to do. They 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 tread a new path and they add emotions, which makes sense. 
Um, there's some, some famous psychologists that said there's 27 overall, which I don't know if we're going to get that far. But um, I think it's a good thing that this second part takes on slightly more mature topics, slightly more relevant like things that can happen. For example, you know, going to a new school and your friends are going to a different school. That I think is something very common and something very relatable to a lot of kids nowadays. The onset of anxiety, the onset of embarrassment, you know, conscientiously, who are you as a person? Because that's a big, that's a big phase of your life is trying to figure out who the fuck am I? You yeah, know? I think that's the best way that they could have go about this. You know, like they, they could, they didn't, they decided to not do the same thing. Adding this belief system into uh, Riley and into a person like really ups the game, ups the stakes, makes explaining all of this just way easier because, uh, yeah, at some point you do start to realize, yeah, I am like this or I am not like that or maybe I can be like this. And that can only be achieved through repetition, through trying and failing, and that's what all those new emotions are there for. And that's something that I really like. Should we just uh, get the whole controversy thing out of the way just so we can actually talk about the fucking movie? I mean, sure. Up to you. Um, I mean, with everything that passes, I think it's less than a con it's less of a controversy and more of like, I don't know. I I I would I, I would care more, but the finished product is a little too good. So that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the controversy, I guess, it's uh, uh, Bill Hader and Mindy Killing don't return to this. Uh, they voiced uh, fear and disgust in the first one. They are replaced by uh, Lisa uh, Lapera and Tony Hale. Um, they're fine. I mean, the, something that I kind of don't love about the first one is that they're not given a lot to do. Um, like both fear and disgust, I think, they get they do the least in the first one, mm -hmm. um, but plus the fact that they they kind of got left alone in the console and with feet and with anger. But Lewis Black just fucking carries himself with so much personality that <laughs> you know replacing him is difficult. And um, yeah, and I'm not saying that Bill Hader and Mindy Killing are not phenomenal talents. They are, but it's just they were given very little to do, and that kind of sucks. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why it sucks that they didn't return because. I would argue that fear, um, fear, disgust, and anger play a much play a significantly bigger role in this one than in the first one. Uh, they definitely do, yeah. And it, part of it is also the fact that, like Bill Hader, uh, I don't know about Mindy Kaling. I know Bill Hader did actually play a significant role in one creating the concept look of fear, like the the design, but also in writing. He did help write the project. He he was uncredited, but he had a few passes and helped with some scenes. So yeah. the fact that they were offered, you know, less than one twentieth of what Amy Poehler like raked in doesn't bode well for the future. And apparently some people at Pixar actually said like they were frustrated with the lack of talent budget that they were allowed. Like because Disney allotted, hey, this much for animation, this much for marketing, talent, this much. What do you mean only that much for talent? Like we can only hook one, maybe two of them. Figure it out. Yeah. Which, which uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's because like the previous uh, Pixar movies didn't rake in as, as as enough money. Maybe because they dropped a ton of them on Disney Plus instead of releasing them in theaters. Maybe yeah. because the one that they maybe because the one that they, they released in theaters didn't make a lot of money. Um, it just kind of sucks, you know, because like this is uh, also like it's Disney. Like they're they're swimming in money. Like they 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 they, they should be allotting it into projects like this. Uh, now, that being said, the voice acting that we got, they are great. They're all talented. And I think it's important to talk about the new uh, people joining the cast. Uh, Maya Hawk uh, plays Anxiety, first of all. Uh, we saw her, uh, she kind of became like a little uh, little scene stealer in, a Stranger in the new season of Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. And now here she, she, she is... Uh, Thing inside. I think she does really well. I think she's uh, she does really really well for the character that they ask. Um, one of my favorite actresses working right now, Ayoa Debiri plays inside plays uh, 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 Envy. Envy. Yeah, 
Uh, I love this actress. I think she's super funny. I think she, she can do drama really well. Kind of sucks. She's not given a lot to do as this character. Well, no, I think I think you should look at it like this. The good thing is that she did play a supporting role in this one. But when they do Inside Out 3, they will replace her with someone not as good, but she'll have more lines. Well, why are you bashing? Ah, okay, I'm why are you bashing Pixar? Like this is your thing, like in your. Oh, I know. I, so that's why I'm. If anyone is equipped to bash Pixar, it's gonna be me. I, <laughs> I, if they made a bad Batman film, I would be the first to say this sucked. And I know my hypocrisy when I say that. When I saw the Killing Joke, I said that movie sucked. It did suck. Yeah. So uh, if anyone's anyway, gonna uh, kill my love, it's gonna be me. Anyway. Uh... Yeah, so, yeah, Ayo Deberi, I think uh, I really like her. I wish she, I wish the character was a little bit more saney, just to let her do more things. Uh, the one who I think really shines is Adele Exocopolis as Ennui, uh, mm. who, I, <laughs> who I thought was super funny. Like, that, I like that they didn't feel the need to, like, okay, let's make them all look and talk the same. No, let's make them saney. Let's make them weird. Let's make them weird. Let's really think outside the box. I really like that concept. Uh, so I like her as Ennui. And then the last one is uh, Paul Walter Hauser as uh, as Embarrassment, who only has like one line in the whole movie. Um, he works. He's in a, he's in a fucking, a, he's in Cobra Kai. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of shocked that they didn't give him a lot to say. But okay, it's his character. It's, it's supposed to be kind of embarrassing. Um, I think it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're watching Power Rangers and they kind of meet up with like the Rangers from the previous season. You know, there's always like one episode where they cross over. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of how it felt. I like having them all inside this console. I like having them all kind of like arguing. And um, while I will agree that the only thing that I, I do think is too, too similar to the first one is that it's about them being kicked out of the of the console and having to kind of fight their way back. Um, I do think it makes sense why. I do think it makes sense the what's happening. And for once, I think what's happening outside of her head is equally as interesting. Um, because everything regarding uh, the, well, hitting puberty and uh the emotions kind of being off balance like they 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 show that in the console by 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 saying like i barely touched the console and like it's broken like it's yeah just the way that they would react yeah. uh really effective really interesting did they, they even throw in an extra emotion with nostalgia and oh, uh yeah but then she's in the back <laughs> you're supposed to come back in 10 years after like two weddings and someone gets married or whatever yeah and a close friend gets married that was too good that was probably the best joke of the whole movie. Just uh, <laughs> and also like the fact that the nostalgia literally has rose-colored glasses. What a great! I did not movie. notice that. It, the the movie's full of little like physical jokes like that. Like for example, when anxiety shows up, she has a ton of of literal baggage. I didn't, she's like, I noticed that. But I didn't catch that. She's like, where do I leave this? <laughs> and uh, the energy drinks. <laughs> oh, the energy drinks were super good and. Uh, also, there's a moment where uh, when she's talking with her two friends in the car and uh, the emotions of the friend, they're like exploding like, oh no, she's going to know, she's going to know, she's going to know. And she's one of her emotions is drinking like a tea and spills it on the console. It's like, no, you're spilling the tea. And then she's like, she says it like, oh, we're going to a different school. Like she literally spilled the tea. Like that, that is the kind of genius that I expect from this company. Yes. <laughs> Or like the the disgust going the two disgusts recognizing each other's bullshit like no oh, yeah enhance. enhance see that right there yeah. out in out she knows yeah uh that was good uh the the, 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 the little joke with the parents or that when they're driving them and the dad's like so we're gonna be alone and then then the mom goes like yeah we can clean the, we can clean the face and you saw his you saw his face be like god damn it yeah, you saw like his face just contract. Uh, 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 the parents are, are played by uh, Diane Lane and Kyle McLaren again from the first one. Great, I love the parents. There's a little short that was released uh, uh, along with the first movie. It was called Riley's First Date. It's all about the dad, and it's so funny. Uh, uh, if yeah, I, I just rewatched it because it's on Disney Plus. Uh, but yeah, I love the parents in this. I love them in the first one. I love them in this, even though they're they're in it very little. Um. Man, this movie is just chock full of 
both funny but also like very real very hard hitting scenes like the whole thing about starting to worry about what we're gonna what's gonna become of us once we enter high school yeah. that's a big deal that's a big emotional toll and i like that it's portrayed as hey changes are good changes need to happen like when when anxiety says like, like no if we goof off you know we're not gonna look good in front of the uh for the coach and it's going to affect us. And Joey's like, whatever. And then they, they, what happens? They goof off. They get, they look bad in front of the coach. They take away the cell phones. It it is, it is a slippery slope. And I like that the movie, much like the message of the first one is how you got to have balance between all these emotions and how forcing one at the front is not the best idea. I, it, it was perfectly made in my opinion. Do you think um to me I think it was I think it was perfect the manner in which they introduce the emotions and how they react in certain situations I feel like it's a great show of like hey here's what each of them are like it's almost not pandering but pandering in a good way where it's like each of their reactions and the way you're supposed to feel with each of these that way again kids that are watching this or teenagers that are watching this can maybe better communicate their emotions. Do you feel like they did that right to me? I feel like they did. Um, again, I kind of wish, uh, I mean, I, I understand that like anxiety is not a villain in this story. She's not even an antagonist or even a rival. Like she's ha- she's arriving there to, I mean, maybe a rival, but like she's there to like- I she's an antagonist. She's not a villain, but she's like, oh, we're going to have to lock you guys up in the vault for a while, but don't worry, I'll take care of Riley. Like- I know better than you, even though I just got here. But that's what Joy was in the first one. She did that to sadness. You're right. And you would think that they would learn, but they won't. Now I can't wait for depression to hit in the next in the sequel and be like, <laughs> this. get out. <laughs> is this gonna be like that? Like, is this gonna be like them learning uh new things? Like there's a ton of uh, little inside things here that that really work. First of all, I gotta talk about this scene, but so they get put in a jar, literally repressing the emotion, which just oh wonderful my God. again. Yeah. Literally. And then they get put into a vault with like the deepest, darkest secrets, which again, much like the first one, the first one did this too, where like they played around with different animation types. I like that this one does it as well. Yeah. We get an XP of what I'm guessing is a uh, uh, Blue's Clues or or Dora the Explorer. Blue's in Clues the and of Cloud. Luffy. Yeah, and then we get like a Cloud Strife XP also with like peak uh, PS2 level graphics, uh, which makes absolute sense. I know so many people who had crushes on like buff anime swordman dudes from the 2000s. Like this is realistic. Um, and yeah, it's it's good that we have like since like that. It kind of reminded me of something out of like Spider-Verse with like the different styles of animation just clashing with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It was just good. Like it was just so well done. And I like how they kind of made fun of how ridiculous it is, but kind of how those kind of things just stay. Like, I don't mean to disgust anyone, but I learned a lot about who I was, who about my taste in, in women when I was a kid and I got as a present a copy of Final Fantasy X-2, and the intro started. I'm not going to say more, but... Final Fantasy X... That's the day I stopped playing with Legos. Huh? (laughs) So there's a Final Fantasy X, and then there's a Final Fantasy X-2. It's a sequel to Final Fantasy X. And it starts three of the women from the first one, uh, Yuna, Riku, and Pain. And the opening is one of them becomes a singer, and she's doing a concert... And the two of them kind of break her out of there. I'm not gonna say what happens. Nothing wild happens, but like, yeah, it did. It did things. To, I I was a little too young to be seeing that. Anyway, um, I don't. What? Yeah, you know what? Nothing, I'm gonna judge you. I'm gonna judge you a little bit. Okay. Nothing bad happens. They're all of age. Anyway, uh, we. If that's your justification, sir. <laughs> I will throw you on the bus along with everyone else. But anyway, that, we uh, just got here. Anyway, I, I'm so curious. I want to. I want to yeah. do a question real quick. Yeah. So I assume if they knew they were going to do Inside Out Part Two, they probably would have included maybe a flash of anxiety or embarrassment or ennui when we see the parents, right? In in the first one. Yeah. In this film, 
they show Riley's deep, dark secret. What do you think that deep, dark secret is? Because I didn't say after the credits. Huh? You didn't say after the credits. No. Oh, there's an after credits scene where Joy comes back into the vault and like she talks to the deep, dark secret and gets the deep, dark secret. What is it? No. Huh? You gotta watch the movie. You gotta pay another ticket. Huh? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, No, so she goes to the vault and she goes like, what's up, Deep Dark Secret? Are you ready to tell me what you are? And he goes like, no. And then she's like, please? And he goes like, okay. And he just goes like, what was it? He was like, uh, uh, Riley burned like a piece of of uh, of the carpet or something. And Joy's like, that's not so bad. I thought it was the time we peed in the pool. And uh, and the step secret is like, oh, you're disgusting. And just like goes back into the vault. Oh, man. I was kind of hoping that that was going to be used in part three. No, sorry. Man, I'm disappointed now. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, like, yeah, it's after the credits. And that's that's when it shows up. Um, No, so there's a lot of subtext in this movie. There's a lot of growing up. There's a lot of learning lessons. There's a lot of trying to find balance, which brings me to the thing. The one thing that I didn't love about the movie, mm-hmm. just like just this one little thing. And sadly, it is kind of the emotional catalyst. The, well, not the catalyst, but like the ending. I don't love that she gets into the team. Really? What we yeah. they were say is she just smiles. Yeah, but she doesn't smile because she's like, oh, I failed, but I got the chance. You know? It's um, obvious that she can balance her emotions now. If she needed some... to cry. What? Isn't hard work supposed to pay off at some point? Yes, but I'm not saying she should have failed. I'm saying I would have been okay with not knowing, you know, if she gets in or not. I think that would have been... If she had, if the movie had ended with her getting like a deep breath before checking the phone, I would have been okay with it. Yeah. But the ending, it's like, yes, she worked hard for something, but also like, look, the, she also did bad things to like get there. And look, man, if you want to be the best, you you gotta sometimes you gotta do questionable things. Maybe you gotta beat the share of your own teammates. This is for a high school team, man. No, not even for the Olympics. Like, I, It's a slippery slope. First, you get to the high school team when you're a freshman. They find out, oh, she played four years of varsity. Then you get up to the college level, and you're on the first team. You're a freshman on the college level. You're amazing. You're the best amateur. Boom. Then you move on to the Olympics. It's a slippery slope, man. It's all the way up. By the way, kids, if you're watching this in the future, I completely endorse you cheating to get ahead. Are you talking about your kids? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it's like you're in the public sector, in which case, look, if you're not going to get caught, by all means do so. Speaking of that, speaking of kids watching this, um, after watching something like Soul, which I generally believe is 100% for adults, mm-hmm. like the lesson is for an adult. I I mean, you can learn as a kid to like, so like you know, enjoy every moment, I guess. But like, you kind of are doing that as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, after seeing that, I think like, man, is Pixar going into like a more mature direction? Like, are we going into this? Because when I was watching this, a lot of kids were crying, and not in a you know single tear like, oh my god, this is hitting me emotionally. It's let me throw a temper tantrum in this closed movie theater. Kids don't have empathy. They're not going to learn shit from this. They're going to they're, they're going to get something out of this later in life, but not now. Like I was there, there's a scene where like probably like the the heart the gut-wrenching moment in the movie is when Joy says, "I don't know how to stop anxiety. Maybe this is a thing that happens. Maybe you just feel less joy when, when growing up." I, I literally let out a oh, fucking damn it. Like I like <laughs> I, I ex I exhaled that with like I was holding it out for years. I just I just heard that and I went like God damn it. Like <laughs> but like kids don't know they're not gonna understand that shit. And they're not going like this is I think a good I guess lesson or like a good retrospective when you're older, but like 
I mean, I don't know what kids are going to get out of watching a, a, another kid have a panic attack. Uh, I, think, I think one, I, I think we should one give credit to the kids. I think kids are more mature than we give them credit for as far as like being able to relate to this. And I'll say this. I think they're trying to pull a Toy Story where in Toy Story, as you got older, the films kind of came out with your progression, right? You know? Yeah. Um, first one, the second, the first one is when you're a kid and you love your toys. Second one, you're kind of transitioning out of the toy phase. Maybe you're a little too old for toys or whatever. And then we get to the part where you go to college, you know, and you got to leave your shit behind. You got to move forward with your life. I'm wondering if they're trying to mirror that pattern with Inside Out, which is the only franchise I can think of where that would work as much as Toy Story because it is about helping kids process their emotions. You know, if you're eight years old around the first one, it's been nine years. You're you're probably uh, uh, in high school at this point. I think the lesson still translates, even though Riley's barely going into high school. I think if you're a high school kid <clears throat> transitioning into going to college, there are there is a lot of overlap as far as figuring out who am I because you don't always go to the same college as your as your friends as your classmates, you you are dealing with anxiety now because high school everything is predetermined for you and as as a college advisor I can say this there's a lot of kids that come to college that are not mentally prepared and I don't mean responsibility I mean emotionally mature, um, and I like the fact that they do discuss anxiety and it's good and bad parts anxiety makes riley practice you know in the morning an hour before everyone else good anxiety makes riley have a panic attack when she's not succeeding as well as she should bad but it's also realistic to show that to people maybe not children as young as five i'll agree with you there but i definitely think teenagers can watch this and take something away because mental health is a bigger conversation that we've had now than in the past 10 years. Um, it's relatable, I think. I, I Myself, I will all say this, I have a quick temper. Chema, you know me better, but I have a bad temper. Yeah. And I do have anxiety. I have to yeah. plan shit out years in advance, especially now that I'm going to be a dad. I need to think of shit not in terms of what am I doing next week. It's what do we, what do we need to do next month? You know, whether it's yeah. getting my dog fixed whether it's a Nikki's doctor's appointment, whether it's requesting a day off or, you know? And so watching this movie, I'm a grown ass man. I'm 30 years old, but I still found it relatable. And I would hope yeah. maybe people that are transitioning from one phase of their life, whether it's the in-between of middle school to high school, high school to college, college to, you're not an adult, but you're not a kid anymore to, growing a family, finding a relationship or whatever. I think this movie, it's best plight. And the thing that I will fight on is the fact that this film legitimately has something for everyone. And I mean that in the best way possible, not generically, everyone should watch this movie and they will walk away with an important lesson. Absolutely. And I, I think that is why the movie is succeeding a lot. Like this is not a movie that people like because of the bright colors. They like it because of the message because of the great storytelling, because of the fantastic world building, and also because of it's got extra things like the good acting, the music, the animation's pretty, everything. I want to talk to you, you know, jumping from the emotional points to, I guess, the business side. This is the highest Pixar debut in history. $294 million debut in its first weekend. Damn. They... In the, in their first weekend, this is the eighth highest grossing movie of the year. Uh, this has not happened. Big Disney is coming out of, let's just say it, a bad financial year last year. Yeah. Okay? Because yeah. everything that they did, they did last year did not do well. And I'm talking on every aspect. I'm talking Disney original. I'm talking Disney live action. I'm talking uh, Marvel. I'm talking Star Wars. I'm talking even... Uh, even a, a, a fucking uh, uh, Elemental, I, I I don't think it did that well. Um, elemental so eventually, eventually recovered, but it took a minute. It took a minute. Yeah. Yeah. This one, you know, recovered its budget in like the first day or so. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good sign because not only is the movie getting a, a, a big box office return, it's also very, very good. 
It's also it, it, it's also uh, people are loving it. People are seeing it several times. It's got a ninety one percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, I don't want to speak too soon, but it might get the highest honor that it can get. We might give it a good review. So, uh, look, I adore this movie. I love the, the puns. I love the joke. I like that at the end, anxiety gets a little chair with anxiety. That that I was that. again. Again, just the jokes in this are so good. And um, I like how it explores that feeling of... Um, self? Trying to, yeah, self, but also like when you're growing up, you kind of latch on, you find someone, some, sometimes someone that's a little older than you and kind of hope that they will guide you or use them as a template. That happens. Um, yeah, so it's very, very refreshing to see a story that has a lot of respect for younger audiences audience that treats them with like the same respect that they would take like an adult character and also f finds a way to just be super just relatable and uh, ever present and i love that this is the kind of series that uh deserves more i want to see a third a fourth a fifth one like however many they want to make i will keep watching them i would like shorts as well like i love the one short that they did and Toy Story got like a billion shorts. Like, why not make more shorts about this one? Because um, you repackage a lot more Buzz Lightyear's than you can of an anger or joy. Two hundred and ninety-five million dollars, man, in one weekend. How? <clears throat> it wasn't even a long weekend. Don't compare it to Toy Story. It's not. No, no, no but you're wondering me. why don't they do as many shorts? It's it comes down to money. Unfortunate, but it's true. It comes down to money. Wouldn't this money be reflected in that? No, but like, okay, you can give Buzz Lightyear a rocket ship to ride. You can give Rex like a new skin. You can sell five Mr. Potato Heads. But how many versions of Joy can you really have? Uh... Actually, wait, that's a good idea. They should have Joy, but with interchangeable hairs and stuff. That way you can make her your Joy. Disney, call me. I have ideas. Um, if I if I if anyone knows how to get money from small children, it's me, because I am a big child and look at all the money I've blown. Oh, I thought I thought you meant something completely and widely different. I will. Um, um, no, you wouldn't. Nah. That's also the funniest thing. No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. But uh, so, what did you think of them showing a healthy amount of anxiety when it comes to like? We have a math test next week we need to study for it, like trying to show, I guess the audience, but all of us like, hey, there's a balance that we, you need to figure out at some point. Oh, shit. There was something else I wanted to bring up. I love yeah. how like at Riley's core, the belief system is like, I am a good person. Right. And I assumed, oh, OK, like that's the shit. Like that's the MacGuffin. That's the thing. That's like the core belief. I am a good person. And I fucking adore the fact that they threw that out the window and they made her because no one is a good person. We're all complicated people. We're not always good. There's no such thing as a hundred percent good person. There are times where you will be selfish. There are times where you will be angry. There are times where you will be disgusted, sad, depressed, anxiety. Like we are not one single thing. It's impossible. Um, so for them to outwardly say, yeah, you're not always going to be this one thing who you are at your core, your belief system, like who you are is it varies. It's impossible to pin it down. If it was that easy to pin it down, we wouldn't have an entire field of study that is still trying to crack the human code. Like, yeah. like psychology is an art in itself because everyone is so different. So I love how they embrace that aspect of it. Yeah. Ever since the movie started and we see uh, Joy saying like, okay, like this is where everything that is going to make Riley Riley go through here. And then we're going to throw everything out because we don't need it. Immediately in my head, I went like, no, she needs all that. Like she needs all that uh, because if, because you're, I, I don't want to call someone simple, but like you are, you're way more complex than you think. And 
the second that all of those all those memories like came back tumbling and like fell into the into the river, I immediately think like, yes, this is she needs. You can only learn and become a person because what is she trying to do the whole movie? Copy this other girl. Uh, she even ends up dyeing her hair to look like this other girl. Um, and that she can only learn that that is not okay by fucking it up, by messing it up, you know? Yeah. And she- uh, and it makes sense that when all those memories kind of come rushing in and form a part of who she is, that's when she gets a panic attack. Because like she's feeling absolutely everything. She's go. She realizes that she makes all these mistakes, and all of her life just starts slashing. And that's what the panic attack uh, kind of comes for. Uh, I like it. I like the scene. I, I like what it's doing. Finding a little funny that a lot of movies are trying, trying to include a panic attack. Like we just had one in in uh, in Bad Boys. Uh, oh yeah. We just had one in Bad Boys. We had one in that uh, Spider Verse show that came out. We had one in the Pussy Boots movie. Uh, we've just we've been having a ton of panic attacks in 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 in, in media it's recently. It's kind of nice, though. Also, I'll defend it. Uh, I feel like it's a little more relatable that someone as manly as Will Smith would have a panic attack in the middle of a gunfight because that makes sense. It. I like that Puss and Boots is like, oh shit's getting real. I like all that. Yeah, look, I'm I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's interesting that it's happening a lot. Like realistic depictions of panic attacks. Like I think there was one in Oppenheimer that we've had them in Iron Man after after he went through the portal. Um, That's an old one, but you're right there. Yeah, I mean it's been it's been happening. It's just interesting that it's been happening a lot recently. It's yeah. almost like the new laser pointing to the sky thing. Like it's panic attacks. There. Yeah. Um and again, not criticizing it. Yeah, go ahead. Apologies. Oh shit! I just realized something. Hey, yeah. are you are you good for the storm? Oh, I have a lot of things to say about the storm, but I can tell you that mm-hmm. offline. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we'll discuss yeah. it after this. All right. I'm, I apologize. So we were ju- we just discussed how she needs to figure out who who she is and herself. Who she is? Panic attack. Copying the other girl. Uh, yeah. Did you cringe at how relatable some of the some of these scenes were with like her embarrassing herself in front of the older kids? I never cringe. No. I I own that I own that shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I found it relatable. I, I I've had that exact same thought process of walking with a group of people and it's like my hands are moving, my hands are moving. What what uh, pockets? Hell yeah! Like yeah. Um, yeah, that's a big one. And like that's that's a thing that you definitely think. Like, um yeah, it's 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 ever present, you know. Um again, I've never been a teenage girl, but like I related to Riley. Like I understood how she was feeling, and I understood like that feeling of if I don't do this one thing right and I don't make it into the team, who am I? You know, what what becomes of me? You know, am I gonna be alone? In high school, like what 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 comes of it, and like that's a perfectly normal thing to think, which is why I never felt I, I I never felt upset at her. I felt empathy for her. I wanted her to like be under understand that this will all pass, and while it really matters a lot right now, like it will pass eventually, and like she'll be okay. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that movie, uh, Eighth Grade, that Bo Burnham directed. That mm-hmm. is, you you cannot watch that movie. It's going you you will not make it ten minutes without with, with what was it called portal. again? Eighth grade. Uh you would be ten minutes and be like, no, I'll cringe and like and like turn it off. Like you would not get there. But uh it's what it reminded me of the most, you know. Huh. Maybe? Uh uh Bo Burnham wait, Bo Burnham yeah. directed that? Yeah. Comedian Bo Burnham? Comedian Bo Burnham. If he's in the feet, fuck it, sweep me off my Bo Burnham. Huh. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I yeah, it reminded me the most out of that. Yeah. He's actually an inside joke with me and Nikki. Um what? What's called? Um uh, lower expectations and smile, because you know it's gonna be a while. Oh god, yeah, that was one of uh. Oh, whoa. Remember. How, how did it go after? Uh, yeah. It's a feat. Fuck it. Sweep me off mine. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that that Bob Burnham. Did, did, did you watch Inside? No. Like his his special that he did during the pandemic? No. On Netflix? Oh god. Is it good? <laughs> it it is the perfect representation of a creative mind trying to survive the pandemic. It is I wouldn't say it's funny. It's real. It's right, fucking bring it on. It's definitely made for someone like me. I don't know if you'd like, it, but yeah. Um, I'll give it a shot. Jesus. Can you hear that? What? What's that? The train. There's a train? Yeah. You can't hear it? No, I can't hear it. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad the mic's not picking it up. Yeah, it's like blasting its horn, but it won't stop blasting its horn. I'm like, can you fucking hear that? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, back to Inside Out. So, um, what else? I I just like the whole thing as a whole. Um, every aspect of it I enjoyed. I think it's an important film more than just the animation or the jokes. Is the fact that it's good for mental health discussions. No, solid. Um, if I can give my score, nine out of ten. Like I can tell you that up front. It's it's the highest film I think this whole year. Um, it'll probably be in my top ten. I, I don't think it'll be number one, but very important movie that I recommend everyone watch. But what about you? I'm also I'm going to give it a five out of five. I think it is a sequel to one of my favorite films ever, uh, and it is just an absolute blast and. It's both funny and it is uh, emotional and it's got a lot going for it. And I hope I don't have to wait another nine years for another sequel. That's that's what I'll say. Um, I'd rather have another sequel of this than a sequel to anything else in Pixar. But I would also rather they do something more original. But this is one of the one where I, I, I do think like, yes, I do like... Uh, I do like the sequel. Um, also, it looks great. Like I just rewatched the first one, and it looks like a million times better. I'm really happy that that like Pixar managed to find that sweet spot between like realistic and cartoony, and know how to employ it in something like this where it really works. Uh, I I think it will also end up in my top ten of the year. Like the rest of the year has to suck for this to not be in the top ten. Um, but yeah, so far I really like it. It's in sitting in good company. So far, my favorite movies of the year are something like this and Hitman and Dune and Challengers. You know, like we've had some fun stuff. And then we've had things like Planet of the Apes and uh, and Godzilla and King Kong and uh, something like Immaculate was also pretty fun. Um, we've had a good combo between like franchise work, sequels and uh, and original films. So... I'm glad it's been it's been an interesting half of the year. We're almost we're we're literally halfway through the year, so um, yeah, interesting it, stuff that uh, that we're going through. It's felt like a bit of a filler year, but there have definitely been some bright spots. I would definitely say that. Yeah, uh, uh, so far so good. Yeah, anger, anxiety. Uh, there's no fear. Oh, there's fear, horror, interest, joy. I'm wondering what emotions they may bring up next. I really hope that they that the third one brings up uh, a romantic love interest for Riley. It'd be interesting. Uh, we definitely we, we saw um, the the Mount Crushmore, which is again the fucking names of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw like uh, in in Mount Crushmore, we see like. Uh, the the made up boyfriend from the first one, uh, the the Cloud Strife XP, and then we see uh, the the boy from the end of the first one, the one with the hat. Uh, he's there. T- yeah, he's there too. So I don't know. Maybe he'll make a comeback. Well, no. Um, I don't know. It's it, it, it it'll be interesting. It'll be it'll be funny. I cannot wait for a third one. Can't wait to see this one again. And yeah, again, five out of five. Oh, awesome. Um, so I guess going from one child friendly animation to one animation that is very anti child. Um, next week, you want to do Hell of a Boss? Ooh, uh, well, are we doing the whole thing or just the first season? We can do the whole thing. I just finished season one. I'm, I'm, I'm like two minutes into season two. 
Where what do you think? Like, what do you think of season one? It's not Hasbin Hotel. It's not the same thing. But that's why. Uh, that's the problem. I had expectations, and it's still good. I'll be clear. It's just I went in thinking it would be like Hasbin Hotel and have an overarching story, whereas instead it's more like an episode of the week thing. It's still great. Yeah. But it's not what I was expecting, and I think I need to rewatch season one again so that way I can. Not lower my expectations, but adjust my expectations. Like, hey, yeah. these are two different... It, this is Batman, this is Superman. They do different things. Give yeah. them a chance. What do you think of the characters in this one? Oh, fucking love it. I love I love Blitzo. I, if I thought I could get away with him... Hey, the always silent? Huh? The always silent? Okay, look, if I thought I could get away with naming my son Blitz without Nikki, <laughs> I would. I shit you not, I would. That's a badass name. Wouldn't Blitz be like short for something? Blitzkrieg? I don't know. What does Blitzkrieg even mean? Oh, it's a form of warfare. It basically means attack fast, attack hard. Don't give them the chance to retaliate. Like, so strike hard, strike fast, Cobra Kai never die? Like that's pretty, pretty that's... fucking much, yeah. Let me see. What... Don't call don't call your child Blitzkrieg. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, what am I going to name my child? Blitzkrieg? Yeah, it's a German word meaning lightning war. I don't want to name my son after a German word for lightning war. That's kind Blitz of a badass could be a, name. Blitz could be a war nickname, moon. though. Lightning, more, lightning war moon. Okay, it's a child, not a D&D character. Okay. No, but I'm saying, like, if my son, if our child is like, hey, what's my name in English? Your first name means lightning war. That's pretty fucking awesome. What's my last name? Moon. That sucks. Jeez. Why is uh, it bitch move, Dad? Well, technically, our last name was supposed to be Martinez, so fuck you. Uh, so, that's a true story, by the way. I'm sure. I, I if, if if that's a joke, I love it. If not, I cannot wait to unpack that with you later. <laughs> Where's <is> that from? <laughs> Ted Lasso. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I love Blitz. Like Blitz is probably my favorite character like, between Hasman and Hell of a Boss. I think Blitz is my favorite character. I love how insane he is. Uh, that's I think a character that can get away with like cursing every second. Yeah, uh, the voice really helps, and I love I love uh, the, the the two the couple. I love Millie and uh, Moxie. Like I love them. They're so cute. <laughs> like, I would love to see Blitzo and Alistair in the same room. It, it's almost like Rocky Raccoon and Tony Stark. I want them in the same room just to see what would happen. <laughs> Did I tell you that? Uh, so I got tickets. Uh, me and two friends. We're gonna see the the uh, the the Beetlejuice musical. Uh, I didn't know that there was a Beetlejuice musical. So it's a Beetlejuice musical, and it's from Broadway. And the guy who plays Beetlejuice, he's the guy that voices uh, Adam in Hasbin Hotel. So. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, no, you know what? He's cool. I'm sure the human is cool. Adam can eat a dick, but I'm sure the guy's cool. But like his voice, his voice is just cool. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm pretty sure the dude is cool, but fuck Adam as a whole. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess we do uh, uh, that next week. I also wanted to throw your way. Have you seen? I saw the TV glow. No, is it available on streaming or is it movies? It's available on VOD. Oh, then down. So. Fuck it. You want okay. to do that one next week instead? Just because, uh, I mean, if you have a chance to see it, um, I haven't seen it yet, but it's on my, I, I already have it like rented and everything. Ugh, uh, just because. 24. No, JK, I'm down. I'm down. Look, look I kind of want to review it because it's an original movie and we've been talking like nonstop about sequels and, 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 and shit. And like, we got to talk about an original movie once in a while. Even though we just talk about Hitman. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I also really like Justice Smith. I like him as an actor. So you know what? Me I too. want to give him a chance. Yeah, and I've heard I've heard really amazing things about this. So, yeah. Done. Let's do it. I saw the TV glow. That's next week. All right. Let's and go. maybe we'll do Hell of a Boss the week after then. Yeah. Or, we, or yeah, you know. We'll, yeah, we'll be here. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Mine, please uh, leave us in the comments what you think about Inside Out Part 2. And uh, and as well as what you would like to see from us next, we'll be keep reviewing every week with something new every single time. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chema, and I'm Eddie. And reviewing. Uh, <laughs>
I'm going back to the start. Uh, stay safe this weekend. Strong storms are coming. Uh, yeah, just stay home. Stay home. Goodbye. I'm going.